Hello, this is Catherine, as I know I need to stop talking. Hello, lovelies. It's Saturday, or maybe not, depending on what day you're listening to this, but it's Saturday for me here. It is five o'clock in the afternoon. I'm, I'm currently in a, and I am every week with the podcast. I can't remember if I said this before. Every week, I'm in a little bit of a Mexican standoff between me and my Ocado driver. Now, God love Ocado. God, I love Ocado. We've been customers of theirs for years, and they have looked after us unbelievably well during the pandemic. And we've been very, very lucky to have a, a shopping slot throughout, which I'm hugely, hugely grateful for. But my regular shopping slot is five till six on a Saturday, which tends to be around about the time that I usually get to sit down and record this podcast. So every week I'm like, shall I start? Shall I wait? Shall I wait till they've come? But on the weeks that I've waited till they've come, they, they come at the end of that slot. And when I think, no, I'm going to go for it, I'll get it all done and finish before they turn up. They're here like bang on at five o'clock. So it's become a little something of a, of a Mexican standoff. So we'll see today whether I have to, to pause halfway through to go and stop Beth from from terrorising the the car driver and also to count out and many many of you who have supermarket deliveries I'm sure will be familiar with this like the bag mountain oh my god my bag mountain is out of fucking control so you're wondering what I'm going on about Obviously, during the pandemic, for a period of time, Ocado and I suspect other supermarkets stopped taking back bags, which they'd previously done to to recycle the bags, obviously for for health and safety reasons. And I don't like throwing stuff out, really. And so they've kind of just sat there. And plastic bags are really good, right? Because they they scrunch up and they go into to small and smaller places. But it's become <laughs> it's become my bag covers become a little bit like that scene with Monica's cupboard in 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 Friends, where I've kind of just like piled them all away and piled them all away and they've scrunched up and scrunched up but there comes a tipping point doesn't there and genuinely there's been a couple of days when I've opened the cupboard where the bags live and the bags have like exploded out at me like oh my god there's bags everywhere I mean there must be fucking hundreds of them and I kind of very nicely ask you to let them know when when you hand the bags back how many bags you've handed back I don't fucking know shit loads that is the that is the answer that's what I said I think I used a more polite terminology to to the driver last week I said he said how many bags of you up I said lots he said shall I take an estimate I said please do he said 40 I said that sounds great so yeah I'm going to need to go and 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 dig out some more of the bag mountain which genuinely it's like I think my bag mountain is roughly the size of a small family car at the moment so I read something online somewhere about how people samosa their bags I think that's what you're supposed to do if you're a proper grown up you're, you've got to samosa your bags I don't really, does that mean folding them into triangles? I'm assuming it does. I mean, I have so many questions. How and and why? Why? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of bags in there. I mean, let's say there's maybe, I don't know, I'll be conservative, 200, 300? I don't know, it could be 5,000. I'm not very good at counting things, but there's a lot. And, and the thought of folding each one of those bags into triangles, I mean, I know it's lockdown. I know there's not a lot to do, but come on now people, come on. So yeah, I'm really sorry if you're my Ocado driver, my, my bags are in a fucking mess and there's shit ton of them. And I can't even vaguely tell you how, how many they are, but but yeah, hooray for Ocado. So we'll see, we'll see where we get to with tonight's, tonight's Mexican, Mexican standoff. Well, it's been quite the week, hasn't it? Celebrating, woo woo, one whole year of a pandemic, fucking A. I mean, yeah, it's a bit hard to, to feel joyous. It's, I found time so weird during the pandemic because in some ways it's gone ridiculously, ridiculously slowly because we can't fucking do anything. But in other ways, I'm like, a year? It's March already? And you think back to it. Is anybody else getting like the whole time hop reminders at the minute? Back when we thought, you know, maybe it'd only be a couple of weeks. I mean, I didn't. I'm a bit of a doom merchant. I remember leaving the office and everybody going, see you in a couple of weeks. And I was like, ha ha, yeah, maybe in like a year. And now I'm thinking maybe, maybe that was an understatement. Maybe it'll be it'll be longer. But yeah, it's... um. It's very strange time, time during a pandemic and, you know, lots of, lots of things I've learned during this time. And I I wrote a blog post on those this morning, as is my style. There was some, some, some serious learnings and also some, some vaguely entertaining learnings, I hope, as well. Who knew that Barnard Castle was not the best place to get an eye test? Me. Me. I knew that. And pretty much fucking everybody else in the, the, the universe, I would say, knew that. Dominic Cummings apparently did not. But yeah, there's there's lots of things genuinely that I have have learned over the last year. I, I'm going to confess now, I still don't know what a sourdough starter is. I, I, yeah, I I just want to be really honest about that. I, I don't know what one is. I don't know what a sourdough starter is. And 
it's one of those things now it's it's like do you ever get that thing when when you meet someone and you don't hear their name properly but you pretend that you've heard their name oh yeah hi yeah really nice to meet you because you can get away for for quite a period of time in conversation with somebody with with not knowing their name and kind of just saying oh hi it's it's you it's lovely to see you again and then there comes a point beyond which you've met that person so many times that there's no fucking way you can now ask their name and you just have to really fucking hope somebody else says it i feel a little bit like that with sta- sourdough starters i feel at the start it would have been okay to to write on one of my friends facebook posts and they went oh making a sourdough starter do you even make a sourdough starter is it something that just that just is and you use it you see i don't know i think it's something to do with bread because i think sourdough is a type of bread but why is it called a starter Oh, I have so many questions. I should Google, shouldn't I? I should probably Google. Except every time I Google anything, regardless of what it's related to, Google tells me that that, that I'm going to die, which is which is always cheery. Mexican standoff complete. Acado have just pulled up outside. Right. I'm going to go and decant the Bag Mountain back shortly. Honestly, I, ge- I genuinely don't even know what goes on in my life. So, Acado duly arrived. I mean, probably must have been waiting outside the house, I reckon, to see the very moment that I sat down in front of my microphone, given that by the timings on my recording, it's like five minutes. Five minutes, Acado. Come on now. I mean, they smashed that Mexican standoff, didn't they? Lovely delivery driver. They're always lovely, the Acado drivers, who told me that I was the winner. And I love winning things. I was like, yay, I'm the winner. I didn't even think to ask why I was the winner. I mean, I was a winner because there were no substitutes but I will I will take that in, in the year of the pandemic so then the shopping the shopping arrives and there's always loads because I live with two children stroke locusts so there's always loads of food and cat food coming in through the door and it's all arriving and then I obviously got my bags out and he said how many and I said loads and he went haha and then went like no we can't touch them to count them and I said you know what you do your best guess and I'm going to be completely happy with that and he was like okay backing away from me like count your bloody bags woman and so all was well, and then we brought the, the shopping into the kitchen. And then honestly, I just, wherever I go, chaos seems to follow. And so we, we got all the shopping out and we put it up on the side. And then I turned my back for like 30 seconds. And Jamie, who, love him, shares his mother's lack of coordination, was pretending to juggle wine bottles. And I was like, ha, ha, ha. And he's like, whoa, I'm going to drop it. Whoa, I'm going to drop it. And I'm like, no you fucking are going to drop it and if you're going to drop something don't drop the wine and then I turned my back to put something into the fridge and there was just this crash of breaking glass oh dear said the children and I turned around assuming that one of the bottles of wine would have smashed no and in some ways that would have been better because wine takes less time I think to clear up than a smashed glass pot of black peppercorns which is what my children between them had managed to throw to the floor. So I have just spent the last 10 minutes of my life picking out black peppercorns and pieces of smashed glass from my kitchen floor. Happy Saturday! Oh well, on the plus side, at least the Acada man had left with my uncounted bags by then. I felt like asking him, do people really fold their bags? But obviously some people do. Maybe I should try. Maybe that's my next lockdown learning. I mean, obviously I've done quite well in in lockdown for, for learnings. Learned to cook a roast dinner. I'm just going to put that one in there again. I feel like, you know, that is a definite tick off the list as I head into my 40s. Can cook a roast dinner. Bang. Smashed it. I can do cross stitch and, you know, more to follow on news of the cross stitch. I literally cannot wait to do my grand unveiling. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. I've got the concentration span of a gnat to have stuck with something, anything for such an extended period is yay me. And of course, as I said on last week's podcast, learned to do a Rubik's Cube solely for the purposes of showing off at the point when I imagine we're allowed to see people again which will probably be in like 2026 but still when you see me face to face 2026 expect me to have at all times a Rubik's Cube on my person with which I will bore you watching me do the Rubik's Cube god my life has become very tragic hasn't it um but yeah one year one year of pandemic and I suppose as I tried to acknowledge in in this morning's post everybody is in a very very different emotional place right now and that's probably the big change isn't it because I think when we went into the pandemic I think actually by and large people were quite aligned i.e it's a bit scary and there's lots of uncertainty but you know we we're in this together there's this kind of like you know great sort of pull together of strength and support and clapping on doorsteps and and kind of 
understandably i guess but a lot of that has has been lost and 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 you know everybody's walked their own journey through this pandemic and for some of us it's been much smoother than others and therefore i don't think any of us got i've got any right to tell anybody how the how they're supposed to feel or, or my most my most hated hated pandemic trait of all all of the what aboutery that's that's sprung up you know you can't even mention how amazing i don't know a, a particular profession is without somebody chipping in and going but what about these people what about these people and and it, you know, it's it's fine. It's it's fine to have a different view from from other people, but it's also fine just to be celebrating something or calling out something and not need to consider the whole fucking world at the same time. And yeah, what about her? I've definitely seen it a few times in responses to posts. Well, you've written about teachers, but what about all of these people? What I didn't say that all of these people weren't absolutely fucking brilliant as well. I'm sure that they absolutely are. But this particular post was about this particular subject. Please, please, please stop with the what about her? As you can tell, it grinds my gears somewhat. But yeah, it's been, I mean, I don't think even, so So I'm, I think the thing I'm most annoyed about with the whole pandemic is it's proved me to be right. And, and that's distressed me greatly because I have always been one of those people who reads like a little news snippet and then immediately turns one little news snippet into, oh my God, we're all going to die. I'm basically, I am Dr. Google. I'm Dr. Google in a person. I'm like, you know tiny bee spotted some oh my god it's like a swarm of killer hornets i i, I tend to catastrophize and when i remember really vividly in january last year first starting to read about virus in in china and i remember thinking to myself fuck this could be really bad and and it still distresses me to this day that if anything that was probably a fucking understatement wasn't it it's been really really fucking bad so yeah, I take no delight whatsoever in having been right on, on that one. But, you know, fingers crossed, our amazing, brilliant scientists, brilliant NHS, brilliant vaccinators, brilliant everybody else that I've forgotten about before you all start whatabouting me. Um, you know, there's lots to there's lots to be grateful for and lots to celebrate as well, I think, even in a time that has been, you know, obviously so so heavily featured with, with grief and, and the losses of, you know, such a huge number of people as a result of, of, of the impact of the virus. But yeah, I think whatever emotions you're you're feeling this week, I can pretty much guarantee somebody else will be feeling feeling the same, even with that, that raft of mixed emotions out there. So yeah, it has been it has been a strange, a strange, strange year for sure. But amidst all that, what's the, one of the strangest things I kind of think is that life in many ways kind of carries on, not quite as normal, but lots of the very normal things within life do still carry on. Like, you know, the kids are back at school, so that's obviously much more like a return to normality, or at least having the luxury of being able to focus on my day job without also having to multitask about the Norman invasion and how the fuck you divide one fraction by another, which I'm sure at one point I knew, but now, no, no, it's gone. As I told you last week about Jamie's comedy trousers and yeah so this week friday went to pick him up from school how was your day yeah it was good mum guess what's happened and i was like oh, don't don't wind me up james is a shocking wind up merchant don't wind me up no you haven't done your trousers again don't be ridiculous and it was literally rinse and repeat the previous week i turned around to the car and and there was this gaping hole in his trousers i'm like my god what the hell are you doing then he went to me it's all right it's not quite as big as last week you can sew them up I said, sorry, I must have misheard you, son. Did you say I could sew them up? He said, yeah. And I said, why am I sewing up your trousers? And he went, oh, I don't know. You probably like that kind of thing. So we had a little chat about stereotyping in the home. And now Jamie knows under no fucking uncertain terms, I will not be sewing up his trousers. I mean, to be honest, I think I'm probably going to cut to the chase and buy him a new pair because the hole is fucking massive. Does anybody else, though, it got me thinking then, does anybody else remember being at school? And I'm a, a child of the 80s, so that gives you the context in terms of timings. I was taught to darn a sock at school. I'm certain about this because I remember learning it at school and then coming home and my mum making me practice darning a sock. I have never darned a sock in my life. Am I unusual? Like, my socks get holes in and when they're just little holes I keep wearing them with holes in because who's going to notice if you've got holy socks not me and then when they get ridiculously big as in and I really do wear my socks to till they till they reach breaking point so I mean I'm talking like ridiculously large holes i.e my entire heel or front of my foot is is pushing through the hole I throw them out I've never darned a sock in my life and then I went oh my god am I wasting money on socks is everybody else darning their socks are you all darning your socks and I've suddenly missed a trick 
um yeah let me know let me know maybe i should be darning darning socks i mean i'm not fucking darning darning jamie's trousers i'd be quicker to make a new fucking pair of trousers the amount of the size of the hole i don't know what children do with their school uniforms and i'm sure my mum i'm sure it's a very parent thing to say i'm sure my mum said the same but seriously fucking hell honestly the the size holes in his trousers ridiculous so yeah so we had that this week the biggest lack of normality i suppose for all of us is beth not doing football because we've gone from like seven or eight training sessions and matches per week to to obviously nothing but god god love everybody who volunteers in grassroots sport you're all fucking amazing in fact god love anybody who volunteers for anything ever you're all absolutely amazing but this week beth's football club her boys team they ran a virtual training session for the first time over zoom and oh my heart so beth was like so ready for it and she came out from school she's like right i'm gonna get my kit on she put her proper training kit on for her team and i said to her where are you gonna do it and she said looked at me like i was an idiot and went outside it's training and the sky was looking like massively overcast and i said mm, i really want you taking my my laptop out there and she's like mum it's fine mum it's fine and so i got the 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 login code for the zoom call and i got the passcode as well and I went over to her and said, right, you know, I'll, I'll put them in for you and I'll set you up and make sure you're okay. And this, the derision that rolled off her, she was like, mum, I'll do it myself. And then she went, they don't want to see you on camera. So there's feedback. So I left her to it. I left her outside in the garden in her training kit with her football. And she got onto her Zoom call and I was sat inside working and I could just see her through the window going for it with all she was worth with her star jumps and her ball skills. And oh, God, my heart. It's so... So good. I definitely think, you know, everybody's lost stuff during during the pandemic. Everybody's got things that they miss. But I think seeing my kids be able to do the things that bring them most joy is probably the thing that I personally have struggled the most with. I mean, I say that seeing one of my kids not being able to do the things that give them the most joy. Jamie clearly has done all the things that bring him the most joy across the last 12 months because he spent a massive percentage of it sat at home in his pants, staring at a screen, eating the entire contents of the fridge and living his best life. So one of my children not being able to do that. So yeah, that was that was genuinely lovely to see. I cannot wait to get back pitch side. I don't care if it's a blizzard, arctic winds, if I'm so numb with cold I can't fucking feel my vagina. I don't care. I just cannot wait to get back on the side of the football pitch. So fingers crossed for, for all those in similar positions. It's not not too long before we can. And bonus is obviously the season's now been extended into the summer. So we might actually have some days when we're not standing in a blizzard and we can feel our vaginas while we spectate. And that would just be a bonus. Obviously, it wouldn't be a week in my household without some drama. I mean, I, I, just, I just don't even know where to begin. So it had been a busy week and it got to Friday night and I finished work. I switched off my laptop and I was like, right, I cannot wait. I am going to sit down on the sofa, pour myself a glass of wine, read my book and do absolutely fucking nothing until it's time for Gogglebox, then I'm going to watch Gogglebox, and then I'm going to go to bed. I had such plans. I was so excited about my plans to do absolutely fuck all. So I'm sitting on the sofa in the lounge, and Mr. I know I need to stop talking, and the kids are all on their respective computers, or Beth was chatting to her mate, and all was, all was quiet and peaceful. I got my book, I was on my Kindle, had a glass of wine, drank that, poured myself another. This is relevant. This will come into the story shortly. And, and was just imbued with this enormous sense of well-being. I think I thought, this is wonderful. This is the Friday night of my dreams. And pretty much at the moment that I had that thought, ASAP, the cat. Now, I've got three cats, just to, just to recap. Sandwich, what a good girl. She's 14, she's an old lady, never causes me any bother. In fact, for the whole time I had Sandwich up until the point we got the kittens, I'd never even had to insure her. That's how little bother she was. Brexit, one of the two kittens that we adopted a year and a half ago, Brexit basically lives to eat. So provided there's regular food, also no bother. And then you have ASAP. ASAP is part Bengal, I believe. And for anybody who knows cats, that probably says all you need to know. She is a fucking liability. I, I don't have I don't have a real life dog, Floppy the li fucking liability. I do have ASAP. She is an even bigger fucking liability than Floppy the dog, as you are about to find out. So I'm sat there on the sofa, living my dream of a Friday night. And suddenly, ASAP walks past the door. Now, I hope nobody listening to this is squeamish. So if you are, maybe just put your fingers in your ears and go la 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 for a few moments so you, you, you miss the worst of the worst of the gory, gory details. So ASAP walks past the door and I notice immediately something is very much awry. Because while ASAP is walking well on three of her four legs, her fourth back leg is, I can only really describe it as dangling. Yeah. 
So I think my immediate reaction was obviously one of great love and concern for my cat, but what actually came out of my mouth was, for fuck's sake, not a fucking gen. Bear in mind, this is the cat who literally has only been back, what, two weeks, three weeks since her last overnight stay at the vet, so she's got form. So unbeknownst to, you know, if, if I had had that done to my leg, I probably would be collapsed in the middle of the floor going, help me. ASAP, because she's ASAP, had decided the best way to deal with what was clearly a chronic injury was to scale the stairs. I think she she loves Jamie, he's her favourite, so I think she was probably going to go and, and sit with him. So I obviously yelled to the kids, I said, shut all the doors upstairs so she can't get in any of the room. And I went over to the stairs and I managed to capture her. And I, when I was younger, wanted to be a vet for a long time. And I'm, I'm kind of pretty good in terms of not being squeamish about stuff like that. I mean, let's not go back to that 24 hours in A&E with the lawnmower incident, because that, even for me, that was like next level. But, you know, I'm, I'm all right with this kind of thing. So I got her and, and looked at her leg. And I mean, I can only describe it as looking like she'd had a very, very bad break. So... Mr. I know I need to stop talking, looked, and I looked at one another, and we said, she needs to go to the vets. And at this point, my glass and a bit of wine came into play, and I was like, I'm not going to risk driving a car, because I suspect that was quite a large glass of wine. I suspect there's a good chance I would be over the legal blood alcohol limit. So Mr. I know I need to stop talking, said, get a taxi. And I was like, yep, fine, we'll get a taxi. So I phoned the vets, they were amazing, they could see her really quickly. God love Jamie, he said, I'll come with you, mum. God love him, he's such a good boy, such a good boy. So me and Jamie got into the car and in the taxi when it arrived and we drove off to the vets. Now, of course, those of you who are familiar with the current setup with vets, entirely understandably, when you get to the vets, you don't go into the waiting room because COVID, so you wait outside. Waiting outside is absolutely fine and dandy if you're in a nice warm car on a cold Friday night. Waiting outside becomes somewhat more challenging when you end up waiting for an hour and a half in the freezing fucking cold. Not the vet's fault at all. It was an emergency clinic and, you know, I was extremely grateful they were able to see her. Jamie, what a trooper. What a trooper. Did not complain once. Instead, treated it as the perfect opportunity to play me all of his YouTube music playlist. And you know what? In, you know, strange times, and definitely not my dream Friday night that I planned, it was actually kind of glorious standing in the car park with him and listening to the two of us singing along to a wide mix of music, anything from KSI to uh, KSI. I haven't forgotten about our collab, by the way. I'm sure it's coming very soon. I just keep putting that in there because I know it would mortify Jamie. So, yeah, we're totally on that. But, yeah, anything from KSI and Billie Eilish to going right back through the ages, played me all his favourite Beatles songs, and then we finished off with a rousing chorus of Piano Man by Billy Joel. So I said to him, I've said, I'm so proud, you have really good eclectic taste in music. And he's like, yeah, well, some of the modern stuff's really good, some of it's rubbish. I said, that's true of every era of music there's ever been some. So we, we, we stood in the car park, we waited for a long time, the vet came out, she took a look at ASAP, she said, well, I'm so sorry you've had to wait, I said, it's absolutely fine, she said, I'll go and have a look at her, and I'll come out in 10 minutes and let you know. She came out in 10 minutes and said, I think you're right, I think it's broken. At that point, I was practically punching my, my fist in the air and going, this is it, it pretty much is like I've graduated from vet school, despite having never gone, but I didn't, I was very sensible. So she said, we're going to need to keep her in overnight and we're going to need to try and sedate her and x-ray her and find out what's going on. So we waved goodbye to ASAP in the darkened car park and then we waited for another taxi to come, during which time, because good multitasking for Friday night, we had another sensible conversation, Jamie and I, about how as a woman alone at night, you can feel quite threatened by men walking towards you. So what would you do? And he, oh, he's such a good boy, he gets it. He's like, well, I just, I'd cross the road or make it really clear that I was walking a long way away from her so she wouldn't feel scared. Such a good boy, so proud. And the taxi came and we got home and then they phoned me much later that night. Again, amazing, yay, yay, amazing people who look after animals and do so at late points on Friday nights when I'm sure nobody wants to be working. You're very amazing. And said, incredibly, it wasn't broken and... They did think there was a lot of damage to the leg. It had been crushed. They thought, based on the puncture wounds that were also evident, she said, it's not a typical cat fight. She said, I think probably what's happened is she's been in a fight with a dog. Of course she has. Of course she's been in a fucking fight with a fucking dog. For fuck's sake, she is an absolute fucking liability. So yeah, that was, um, that, that was my Friday night. Woo, my really relaxing Friday night in. What a treat.
did however get back in time for Gogglebox, so all was not lost. The good news is that ASAP is now home, so they phoned us this morning and she is back home in the cone of shame. Cone of shame, cone of shame, looking and feeling very, very sorry for herself with an absolutely battered leg, which I think jury's still out in terms of whether she's going to regain use of it. It does not look good. It's doing a horrible thing of bending in a ways that legs should not bend. So we'll see how she progresses. But yeah, what a fucking idiot. Who gets, which cat ever? She's quite a small cat as well. Which cat ever thinks, I know what I'll do with my Friday night. I shall go and fight a dog. Fucking idiot. Good job. We adore them, eh? So yeah, that was Friday night. What a treat, honestly. It's just, it's, yeah, just like life is never dull, right? And I should be very grateful and indeed am very grateful for that. Next weekend, incredibly, is our 15th wedding anniversary, which is mad. I mean, talk about time going quickly, 15 years. I feel quite old. I don't feel old about nearly turning 40 because I'm like, ah, I'm a young whippersnapper that's no age. But 15 years, that's like proper serious stuff, isn't it? 15 years. It's got a proper, it's a proper anniversary because, you know, every anniversary has like a thing, doesn't it? Like tin. I think 10 years is tin tin it's rubbish that's shit who wants a tin of baked beans for their their wedding anniversary present but 15th crystal that almost sounds official doesn't it so beth has interpreted that as we are going to buy her all of the crystals she's ever wanted from the crystal shop where she covets crystals so we'll, we'll see how that works out but yeah 15 years 15 years since we got married in the lake district of all places which is nowhere near where we live but I holidayed in the lakes a lot as a child and it's absolutely beautiful. If you've never been, and I'm sure with, not just with, with COVID, but with climate change as well, I'm sure lots of us will be taking lots more UK-based holidays and, oh my goodness, it's stunning as a destination, particularly if you can get away from the touristy bits and get to some of the really off-the-beaten-track areas. You can walk for miles and miles and not see another person. It's just stunning. So yeah, we got... Got married in the Lake District. It was a small wedding. We had, I think there were 40 of us in total. And it was, oh, it was just a perfect day. It was just absolutely glorious. It was, for anybody who knows the area, it was on the shores of Lake Oldswater. So we got married in Sharrow Bay Hotel, which is, yeah, was beautiful. And it was, it was lovely. Obviously, big me, not without drama. So, I mean, many, many and varied dramas. My best friend, James, was my bridesman. And he was due to come up the night before and stay in a, in a big house where, where we, where we were staying. And he phoned me the day before, he said, I'm ill. I've got a stomach bug. I'm so sorry, I'm being sick. He said, I'm going to stay here tonight and I'll come up tomorrow morning and we'll absolutely be over at the wedding venue loads of time. And I said, fine, no problem. You know, gutted not to have you here, but you know, go and feel better. I don't want your sick bug either. So all eminently sensible. Anyway, so the morning of the wedding arrived and I love you, James, but your timekeeping has never been the fucking best, has it? I mean, this is the boy, when we were at drama school together, I would regularly be standing in the doorway to his bedroom screaming, the fucking bus is outside. He'd be like, I'm just finishing my hair, fuck's sake. Uh, so, but the wedding wasn't until half three in the afternoon. I was like, we've got plenty of time. My confident shout, so we've got plenty of time, became somewhat less confident as the morning and indeed the afternoon started to wear off. And everybody else had left the big house. It was just me and my godmother sitting there. And she was like... He will turn up, won't he? And I was like, yeah, I, I said he's notoriously unreliable in terms of timekeeping, but he will turn up. Anyway, eventually, just as she was starting to go, shall I get my car and drive you over? Because we were staying on the other side of the lakes. Um, James James materialised and, and it was well worth it. We then shot across the lakes in the car, driven by his then boyfriend, now husband, Chris, singing Tina Turner. It was a, a very happy memory. Brilliantly, um, because James had been poorly, he so he's a brilliant pianist and he was playing the piano for my wedding. And he was playing the piano during kind of the early reception bit. And I said to him, do you want a drink? And he said, oh, probably not yet. I'll just have a Diet Coke. And honestly, this is one of my favourite stories of my <laughs> memories of my whole wedding. So it's very posh, Sharrow Bay as a hotel. And we, we were, the wedding was in a little annex called Bank House. And he asked, obviously, for a Diet Coke. And they had those, you know, you get those miniature cans of drinks, like those really small ones. So the hotel obviously had this miniature can. And they decanted some of it into a into a cut crystal glass and had obviously then thought, oh, we don't just want to put the rest of the can out. That's going to look really rubbish. So they looked around for a suitable vessel to put the rest <laughs> put the rest of the coke in, which is how it was that we have a photograph somewhere of James playing the piano, pissing himself laughing, because on top of the piano is his cut crystal decanter of coke. 
and a gravy boat containing the rest of the coke. Honestly, you couldn't make it up. It was absolutely fucking gold. So, so that was that was brilliant. As was my one of my oldest friends, Tim, who I also met at drama school. Bless him. He'd come all the way up, up from London for the wedding. He'd arrived in the morning, and you know, also a little bit like James, timekeeping. Love you, Tim. Not always strong. Or your strongest, maybe your strongest point. And so, Tim, I remember really vividly. Obviously, the Lake District, lots of mountains. Shocking for mobile phone signal. So Tim was running late, his train was running late, but it was all good, it was absolutely fine. He had loads of time to get from the station to the hotel. So he was keeping in contact with my sister on my mobile phone while I was doing my makeup. So I've just got this really vivid scene of Helen, my sister, who takes no shit, leaning out the window going, Tim, what are you doing? Where are you? Why aren't you here? And he's like, I'm here, but there's nobody here, I don't understand. And, and Helen's like, what, what are you banging on about? What are you doing? Where are you? Read me the address. So Tim read her out the address, and this is probably about 20 minutes before the ceremony is due to start. Tim has managed to read the wrong address and go to the wrong venue on the other fucking side of the Lake District where we were staying previously, 40 minutes away. He now has 20 minutes to do a 40 minute journey across the Lake District, during which I think I'm right, he also had to get changed in the back of the taxi because he literally arrived. He was doing the music for our ceremony. He arrived, shot into the room and started playing the, um, the opening number. So... Oh, happy memories, happy memories. Like I say, nothing's nothing's ever without drama, but it pissed it down. It was a miserable fucking day and we loved every single second of it. But 15 years, fucking hell, I can't believe it. We, we You know, maybe we should... I've, ta I've talked to Mr. I know I need to stop talking a lot recently about perhaps recording a podcast together. So uh, my only fear is that you'll like him more than me because sometimes he's funnier than me. He does also like to talk about politics and I have made it very clear this is not a political podcast. Pod politics would be off off the menu so we, we, we might have to then debate what other topics we can we can talk about his his argument would be Catherine everything's political everything may be political but I still don't want to talk about it on my podcast so we'll see maybe maybe we'll celebrate our 15th wedding anniversary with a big row about what we're going to talk about on a podcast but yeah we might do that 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 might be something to something to follow who knows when we're not ushering injured cats around fucking hell I mean honestly talking of you know injured body parts my toenail's growing back. I, I know that's why you tuned in this week, was to hear the progress of my toenail. It's growing back, genuinely. It's looking remarkably good. I've painted it a nice deep red colour. It's obviously only halfway up the... I was going to say the shaft of the toe. That's not right, is it? Do you call it a toe? Is it the shaft of a toe? No. It, oh, fucking hell. Oh, oh, it's been a long year. Um, It's not the shaft of toe. Anyway, it's halfway up the, the toe bit thingy. Do you just call it a toe? It's just a toe, isn't it? I, there are times when I definitely need to stop talking. I feel this may be one, one such time. Anyway, it's growing back. So I'm very happy about that. That's that's the exciting news for this week. Maybe I'll maybe I'll share a photo soon or, or maybe not because that would probably be quite quite repellent for everybody. I mean, I mean hairy toes. Does anybody else get hairy toes? This is just... I'm not sure about the ageing process. From what I can see so far, it just seems to involve a lot of hair growing in places that you don't want it to grow and parts of your body giving up on gravity entirely. I'm not sure where that fits in the evolutional process, but I wonder whether it's because back in caveman days, we just wouldn't have lived to this point, would we? So it's almost like evolution didn't have to worry. It's like, well, pff, past, past 30, mate, you'll be dead. Now that we're still alive, it's like, mm, you'll still be alive, but... Not looking so great, if I'm honest, but, you know, maybe, maybe the, my hairy toes will keep me warm in winter. Maybe they are evolutionary. Maybe they'll save me from buying slippers. There we go. Or darning socks. There we go. You see it all. Oh, the beautiful circle of life. Right. I think I should quit this one while I'm ahead. Um, as always, my lovelies, have good weeks. It is strange, strange times, but... Spring is coming, clocks change next weekend. Oh, that'll be a fucking joy, won't it? I probably will, I still haven't changed my, I've got a, a new clock in one of my, it's to do with my electric toothbrush. Fuck knows why my to electric toothbrush needs a clock, but there you go. Yeah, I haven't changed that since the last clock change. So that's my that's my new oven, oven clock to deal with. But yeah, clock change next weekend. But yeah, I will be back to update you on what fucking random shit's gone down in our household, because let's face it, based on this week, it'll be a hell of a lot. Have great weeks, look after yourselves, take care, and I'll see you next week. Lots of love, bye-bye.